Wow, what a day, huh? This has just been incredible to me. I got to tell you, it's a little scary for me because I think I'm the oldest speaker today, maybe younger than Richard Dreyfus. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure, but it's a little intimidating for us older folks. But one thing I can tell you is I've heard a lot today about words of inspiration, follow your passion, find your passion. And one thing I can say is I was lucky and I did that. I'm a marine biologist, and I just love my job. I love it so incredibly much. But one thing that's come with this job, unfortunately, is witnessing some of the assaults on nature by human beings, uh, many of which we have no knowledge about. And I think the one today I'll be talking about is really something very few of us think about. So... What I have to do today to take this particular problem into perspective for you is to have you imagine that it's happening to you. It's actually happening to other species on this planet. Not so much us yet, but um, you'll see what I'm talking about soon. So what I want you to imagine is you're in your backyard and the perfect alien invader drops in. Now, he could be really ugly like this guy, or he could be beautiful. It doesn't really matter, though. He's the perfect invader. What would be the features of this perfect invader that would let him take over your world? Well, first, he would be a voracious predator, and he would eat you, and he would eat all the other species around you with impunity, being a very aggressive species. Secondly, he'd be protected from us and our predators by perhaps having something like venomous spines. And then thirdly, reproduce like gangbusters. There would be these things all over the planet until the entire Earth was taken over. So that's what it's like for some of our species on this planet. Weird. Is this science fiction? Actually, it's not. It's actually real. This stuff is happening every day in some part of the world. Now, I'm going to give you one particular example that I'm studying now with my students, and that's the lionfish. Lionfish is an amazing animal, as you'll see. And I want to go through this one case study in some detail with you just to show you how insidious this issue of invasive species are. Now, the lionfish didn't come from outer space. It's actually a resident of coral reefs in the Pacific Ocean, where it's not very common. It minds its own business, it's a beautiful animal, and it's just out there doing its thing. But the problem takes place when people move a species from one part of the world to another part of the world. That's where the trouble comes in, because they lose their natural controls. How did this happen with lionfish? Well, the map here shows the distribution of lionfish in their native habitat, the tropical western Pacific Ocean. Being fascinating, beautiful animals, they're captured live and flown to the United States and other places as aquarium fish because they're so cool to look at. Young boys love to have these things and feed little fish to them and watch them slurp them up. The problem comes when some people either released their lionfish or their lionfish escaped into the Atlantic Ocean, and that's where the trouble began. As you can see on this map, with the years ticking off in the upper left-hand corner, the fish first appeared off Florida in the mid-1980s, and for a while, nothing much happened. It just sort of sat around locally. But then at the turn of the millennium, they skyrocketed up the east coast of the United States, soon jumped over to the Bahamas, and then rapidly spread throughout the Caribbean Basin and the Gulf of Mexico. A population explosion, a huge population explosion. The densities now in this region are much higher than in the Pacific. Now, Atlantic fish have never seen a fish like this before, and they feed like no other predator in the world. They spread out those large fan-like fins, and they slowly herd small reef fishes into a corner and rapidly slurp them up, shown here in slow motion. Native fish have no clue what's going on. They don't recognize these things as predators. They are having a heyday. They eat a huge variety of different fish on the coral reefs, and they actually reduce the abundance of fish in this region by 90% at a time, some species being driven locally extinct. These things are really good at what they do. Now, on top of all that, 
If that weren't enough, they're everywhere, they're eating everything, they're protected by highly venomous spines that really deliver a nasty sting. So species that could attack them, like sharks or grouper or something like that, don't. They're not really particularly edible. So there they are. They're the perfect alien invader, having a heyday on our reefs. Now, I wish I could just say that's the story, bummer. There's a lot of fish being eaten in the Caribbean, but it's actually a lot worse than that, unfortunately. So first, let me talk about where these things are invading, coral reefs. Coral reefs are truly the tropical rainforest of the ocean. They have more species than any place else in the world, even tropical rainforests, at least per unit area. They are just the gems of the ocean, and I love nothing more than to be underwater in a healthy coral reef. But increasingly, we're starting to lose reefs. And fantastically, this one species of fish is helping that loss. Let's first look at the value of reefs. Reefs um, provide a huge amount of tourism to nations that have reefs. If you've ever been to a reef, you may have been part of that tourism. But for people who live there year-round, they're a very important source of food. They serve as natural breakwaters to prevent storms and erosion from washing land into the sea. But relevant to everyone in this room, especially older people you know, like me, um, they're becoming an incredibly important source of medicines. Very humble species like sponges and sea squirts produce chemicals that fight cancer and other debilitating diseases. So what's going on with the lionfish eating fish and the loss of coral reefs? Well, on a healthy reef, there are fish such as parrotfish that are seaweed eaters. And by munching away at the seaweed, shown here in this little tiny photograph, they allow space for the corals to grow, the corals being the foundation of the reef, like the trees of the forest. Enter the lionfish, the parrotfish get eaten, the seaweeds are allowed to grow, they smother the corals. Goodbye, coral reef. It's all connected. One of the big things I want you to know is everything in the world is connected. So think about what we've got now. We have a situation where beautiful Caribbean coral reefs that provide a huge number of services to many people around the world, and probably medicines that will affect all of us sometime in our lives, are turning into something like this. Dead coral rubble with seaweed on it. Part of the reason is because somebody, somewhere, let their lionfish go into the Atlantic Ocean. A simple act like that. So the reason I want to talk about this particular issue to you today is we have huge issues facing us in the world. We have climate disruption. We have habitat destruction. Issues that are so huge that at least for me, it's very difficult to think, God, how could I specifically make a difference? Yes, I can change my lifestyle. But this is an issue, invasive species, which is right up there with those other two in terms of driving species extinct, that we can each do something very simple to remedy. For the lionfish, it's too late, and that's true for many invasive species. Once of an invasive species becomes established, it's almost impossible to eradicate. What we're trying to do now in the Caribbean is spear these things out of local areas. That takes a lot of time, it's very expensive, and it's not very efficient over many areas. We're even trying to start lionfish fisheries. There's a lionfish cookbook, for example. They're very tasty animals, but they have those venomous spines you gotta get around first, not usually preferred prey. So we've got these entrenched species in the Caribbean. I don't know what the future brings. We're continuing to study it. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. There are thousands of alien species being distributed around the world as we speak. Here in California alone, there are over 500 species of invasive plant. There are over 500 freshwater and marine species that are alien to this area that have been released. Each one is a time bomb that could go off at any time. But the thing that's amazing about this particular issue is it just takes a little bit of vigilance on all our part to prevent these 
horrible things from happening. Just someone have inform, having informed someone else of, hey, you know, maybe you shouldn't let that lionfish go when you move to Kansas, moving away from Florida. Something like that could have saved all that misery. So I want to leave you with some specific things that each of you can do. Very easy things. First, learn about alien species and invasive species. Get to know who the potential problem species are. Avoid exotic pets, or if you must have exotic pets, please don't let them go, ever. Don't let them escape. Avoiding hitchhikers is the big one. Most of these species get moved around the world just as a byproduct of humans moving around the world. And this is true of all of us. Just going on a hike somewhere and then taking your hiking boots and hiking somewhere else, you may be releasing seeds from soil that were trapped in the cleats. Clean your boots off after you go on a hike. Moving fruits from one place to another, or plants, or firewood even, can move insect pests from one area to another. This is why we have agricultural inspection stations. All states and all nations have invasive species programs. Help them, join them, start a conservation club, and inform your fellow citizens about the easy steps that can be taken to prevent the spread of these types of animals. So the way I want you to grasp the world is to grasp invasive species before they become problems. Of course, don't literally grasp lionfish or this guy, but by all working together, we can stop this one scourge that's facing the planet without a huge amount of effort. Thank you very much.